Hi, Dr. P here. This is a fairly straightforward subject, but it's taken me a long time to get it done. It's about the need for imagination in game playing. Obviously, with most forms of entertainment, you need to use your imagination because there are things missing that you have to put in with your brain. And games are part of that. You need to imagine things that aren't actually there. Now, how much imagination you need depends on what kind of entertainment. For example, with video games, we've got to the point where much less imagination is required than with tabletop games because the game can show so much more with photorealism. There's a tendency these days to expect games and life in general to be highly attractive. We expect movies to be extravaganzas with lots of computer-generated special effects. We could even make a young Arnold Schwarzenegger if you saw the latest Terminator movie. We expect tabletop games to have lots of attractive artwork and bits, often miniatures. These are all aids to imagination. I think imagination has suffered for decades as young people, kids, are presented with fully formed items such as toys that have stories associated that require much less imagination than in older times. Kids don't just get a set of race cars and have to imagine the rest. They get cars from the movie Cars 1 or Cars 2 or Cars 3 and so forth. Here I want to differentiate brain fever which is wild imagining from imagination in the service of problem solving or entertainment. The use of imagination in the service of solving problems seems to be much stronger, that is to say more noticeable, more used in older people than it is in younger people. Brain fever is more common as people are younger. Now an aside here, a digression, the modern mania for seeing certain kinds of events such as sports live on your mobile phone or otherwise rather than time shifted seems to me to be a minor symptom of the failure of imagination in modern culture. I time shift sporting events frequently but it seems out of fashion for many folks. You need to use your imagination when you know that the game actually ended six hours ago and some people don't seem to be able to do that. I'm sure there are many other reasons as well. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is an example of the power of imagination. Originally it was a radio program in Britain which I happened to hear when I was living there. Then it was t on TV. Then it was a book and a series of books. Then a radio program again and then a movie. And somewhere in there I'm sure there were video games as well. I've always thought the original radio program was more entertaining than the movie or even than the books. Tabletop RPGs rely heavily on imagination and many video games derive from tabletop RPGs but the video games are able to supply much of the look and feel that you can't do on the tabletop. Now I've tried to rank various forms of entertainment according to how much imagination is required to enjoy those forms and I'm going from least to most. The one that requires the least imagination is movies because everything's there for you to see and to hear. And of course in 3D even more so. Next is video games. They're not quite as detailed as movies if only because the rendering times have to be immediate or more or less immediate whereas a movie will render overnight or even longer in order to provide the detail that you get there. The next level where you need a little more imagination is typical videos like videos on YouTube. They're less polished and less detailed. Then we get the comics book, comic books or some people prefer graphic novels where you have individual panels and you have to sort of imagine everything that connects those panels together. There's a famous book about that that is always recommended to people who want to design video games. Then we get to live action role playing or LARPs where people are carrying foam swords or rattan swords and fighting each other and where there are other props you do it live you don't just sit around the table. 
So then we have stage plays depending on how mundane the topic is. Some stage plays are very static. Others are quite active. And the setting can, have, can make a big difference. Audio presentations such as the original Hitchhiker's Guide require even more imagination. You get the dialogue and the sound effects, but nothing visual. Tabletop games provide visuals without much movement, without dialogue, without sound. So they require even more imagination in some respects than even audio presentations. Then we get RPGs. Then oral storytelling. It takes a lot of imagination and a good storyteller for an oral spoken, that is, story to really work and to strike your imagination. Then we get to novels where it's all text and the author has to try to paint the scene in words. That takes a lot of imagination and maybe it's one reason why people don't seem to read much anymore, whether it's novels or nonfiction. And then short stories, I think, take even a little more imagination because the author doesn't have or doesn't use so many words to describe what's going on. Of course, some authors are very descriptive and some are not. And that's just the style of the authors. Um, who knows why? Of course, this is a generalized list and you can find individual exceptions. Remember, Quote, no general, generalization is always true, not even this one, unquote. Perhaps the hand-holding we see so often in video games comes from this lack of imagination. And of course, in video games, players aren't using their brains much. They aren't thinking much, I should say, because those games, many of those games are athletic wear, where it, what counts is how fast you can twitch in, in effect. I think as entertainment requires less and less imagination, imagination atrophies in the young from lack of use. There are many things from muscles on down that if you don't use it, it gradually goes away. Now in tabletop games, designers could try to help player imagination, but the ultimate decisions about artwork and miniatures are with the publisher, not the designer, because that all costs money. And of course, if the designer self-publishes, then the designer decides how to spend money in order to get these aids to imagination. Is this lack of player imagination bad? Well, I don't know, but it's certainly unfortunate. Can we do anything to change it? Not much as individual game designers, certainly. Probably not much, period. It's a consequence of the advances of technology, really. Thanks for listening.